Hello and welcome to 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. The Royal Court has mourned the demise of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Majlis of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, to offer their condolences on the demise of the late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, to his sons, Sheikh Dr. Muhammad bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Ibrahim bin Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa and his grandsons, praying to Allah Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of condolences from Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, on the demise of President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. The Kuwaiti Emir prayed to Allah Almighty to bless the deceased with mercy and rest his soul in eternal peace. His Majesty the King received similar cables from Kuwaiti Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah and Kuwaiti Prime Minister Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with Jordanian monarch King Abdullah II. He wished the Jordanian people success in achieving their aspiration for more growth and prosperity. Both leaders underlined boosting bilateral cooperation regarding issues of common interest. His Majesty the King loaded the honorable fraternal stances of Jordan in supporting stability and security in Bahrain and supporting the kingdom in all circumstances. He wished Jordan and its people further progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King expressed good wishes, marking the last 10 days of Ramadan, wishing both countries and peoples many happy returns. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, paid tribute to the President of the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, late His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, who passed away today. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister recalled the deceased's patriotic stances and contributions in the various positions he had assumed in the judiciary, Islamic affairs and municipalities throughout his career until his demise on the service of faith 
in the homeland. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed sympathy with the family of the late His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid, praying to Allah to grant his soul eternal peace and to bestow patience and fortitude upon his family. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, performed today the funeral prayer for the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, President Late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Premier and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also attended the burial of Late Sheikh Abdullah in the presence of members of the royal family, senior officials and citizens. They paid homage to the seized, loading his contribution to serving Bahrain and the Islamic nation. His Royal Highness the Premier stressed that the contributions of late Sheikh Abdullah will remain carved in the memory of the nation, loading his efforts in developing Bahrain's judiciary, serving Islam and supporting the government's efforts. He described late Sheikh Abdullah as a national Arab and Islamic icon who spared no effort in serving his homeland and nation. He also pointed out the strong relation he had with late Sheikh Abdullah, praising his constant readiness to serving Bahrain. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the late His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, witnessed several stages of Bahrain's modern history and all the events of the 20th century which earned him a personal connection to history. His social status and family legacy also earned him a personal connection with the leaders of Bahrain over a century. He worked as a judge in Bahrain courts in 1951 and in 1954, he founded the first public library in Halag, Al Khalifiya Library. He also chaired Rifar Municipality and then became president of Manama Municipality and the first Council of Planning and Coordination. In 1971, he joined the first Bahraini government as the Minister of Agriculture and Municipalities, then Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs and Minister of Commerce and Agriculture. Then he became Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs for two consecutive governments, Minister of Islamic Affairs and Deputy Prime Minister, and finally served as President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs until his passing. In 1978, the late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid founded and chaired the Historical Document Center, which became, as a result of his efforts, the center of Bahrain's history. He also supervised the establishment of Isa Cultural Center, where he included his personal historic library to become the center's icon. He chaired the committee assigned to prepare the draft of the National Action Charter and then the Constitution Drafting Committee in 2002.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday visited the Majlis of Al Dosiri family, the Majlis of Al Kohiji family and the Majlis of the sons of the late Abdul Jabbar Al Kohiji. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of collaborative efforts to achieve the objectives of Bahrain's comprehensive development program led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness reinforced that Bahrain's long-standing commitment to economic diversification has ensured its ability to turn challenges into opportunities, noting in particular the role of Bahrain's economic vision 2030 and its underlying principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness and driving sustainable economic growth. His Royal Highness also highlighted the success of the Kingdom's non-oil sector, which stems from a commitment by the Kingdom's leadership to ensure that the private sector holds an active role in driving the Kingdom's development. In this regard, he noted that the government will continue to implement new and improved services to support the private sector and serve the interests of citizens. His Royal Highness added that the Kingdom is strengthening its economy through the implementation of a number of infrastructure and development projects that will support diversification, attract investment and create opportunities for Bahrainis. The Majlis hosts and guests expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's visit and noted his multifaceted role in supporting the Kingdom and its citizens.
Al-Azhar Al-Sharif and its Grand Imam, Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayyib, offered condolences to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa and to the people of Bahrain on the demise of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al-Khalifa. Al-Azhar Al-Sharif praised the vital role played by late Sheikh Abdullah in spreading and enhancing culture in the Kingdom of Bahrain, in addition to his valuable publications that documented the Kingdom's history and heritage. Al-Azhar also offered its condolences to the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, praying to Allah to grant his soul eternal peace and to bestow patience and fortitude upon his family. The Royal Charity Organization held a charity auction ceremony in cooperation with the Sovereign Art Foundation under the fourth charity art exhibition, where the paintings of winning participants were sold in the presence of a number of ministers and officials from the kingdom's organizations and companies. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work in Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his keenness on philanthropic and humanitarian work, as well as his support to orphans, widows, and those in need. His Highness hailed the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the RCO. His Highness noted that such programs enhance community partnership and promote the culture of philanthropic work among students. He commended the cooperation of the Ministry of Education and Sovereign Art Foundation and all the schools and public and private universities that participated in the exhibition and auction. For his part, the Secretary General of RCO, Dr. Mustafa Al Said, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his continuous support to those in need, praising the support of His Majesty. Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the RCO and efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. Upon directives from His Majesty the King's personal representative for charity work in youth affairs, President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, honored to Muhtim, the champion of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, 11th Ramadan football tournament, Nasser 11. His Highness Sheikh Nasser's directives to deputize his son, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Nasser, and the son of His Highness Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid, reflects the importance of future generations in sports, especially football, and embracing sports achievers in line with His Highness's 2018 initiative entitled Gold Year. The Representatives' Council held its meeting today, chaired by Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah. The Council reviewed and approved the reports of the Service Committee regarding on the rehabilitation and employment of people with disabilities on the organization of the press, printing and publishing, and on education. The meeting reviewed and approved the reports of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee regarding a draft law, amending the Article 20 of Building Regulation Law and on establishing a fund for poor condition houses and regarding the cost of establishing and developing infrastructure in the reconstruction areas. The Council approved the issuance of a statement condemning Iranian crimes and interference in the affairs of Arab countries, the occupation of Iranian regime of the United Arab Emirates Islands and the support of terrorist groups and acts of repression against the Iranian people and the persecution of non-Persian minorities. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa of distributing 5,000 housing units in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of Ministry of Housing Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmad Al Khalifa affirmed that the ministry continues to distribute completed units in Khalifa 
city project. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed stated that the Khalifa city project is considered one of the main projects in the 25,000 housing units implementation program listed in the government work program in line with the royal directive of constructing 40,000 housing units. He added that Khalifa city will accommodate 54,000 people by providing 6,000 housing units, noting that the ministry has completed 400,000 housing units. The Supreme Council for Environment, in cooperation with Lulu Hypermarket, launched an environmental initiative aimed at minimizing the use of non-biodegradable plastic bags by promoting the use of reusable and biodegradable bags. The event marked the World Environment Day, which falls on June 5th. SCE Chief Executive Dr. Mohammed Mubarak bin Dana emphasized that the initiative is intended to enhance bilateral cooperation between governmental organizations, private companies, and firms to promote environmental awareness in Bahrain. He stated that the initiative, being implemented by Lulu Hypermarket, aims to provide consumers a sustainable alternative to harmful bags. He praised the initiatives, which contributes to protecting the environment in general and the marine habitat. He also praised Lulu Hypermarket's continuous efforts in upholding social and environmental responsibility in Bahrain. He emphasized that the SCC realizes the importance of involving individuals, the community, civil society and the private sector in combating plastic pollution problem. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister to develop urgent solutions to ease traffic flow across the Kingdom, the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, in coordination with the Ministry of Interior's General Directorate of Traffic, has announced that Phase 1 of development works to improve traffic signals on Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Al Sabah Highway is due to commence next week. The project aims to implement urgent improvement works designed to alleviate traffic in vital areas. 130,000 vehicles use the Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Al Subah Highway each day and 10,000 vehicles per hour during peak times. The Ministry of Works confirmed that the works will start with modifications to traffic signals at the Nabi Saleh and Sitra shopping mall intersections. The Fatah Islamic Center conducts great educational classes and spiritual activities in Ramadan and throughout the year. More in this report. Ramadan is a time of spiritual reflection, improvement and increased devotion and worship and there's no place better than the Fatah Mosque, one of the largest mosques in the world, encompassing 6,500 square meters and having the capacity to accommodate over 7,000 worshippers at a time to enjoy the amazing peaceful vibes. Taraweeh prayers and, uh, and, and uh, Al-Fatah Mosque is proud to bring in uh, the, the, the best uh, Quranic reciters who, who, who lead these uh, Taraweeh prayers. Also, one of the main things uh, is that we have, like uh, outside the uh, west of the car park, there is a huge tent that has been set up, and uh, it houses about 500 people, and it is used to break the fasting of, uh, of Muslims. Besides being a place of worship, the mosque is an Islamic center that conducts great friendly enlightening religious classes for both genders and all ages. We have around uh, between uh, 280 to 300 students. Uh, we give uh, tafsir and qira'a uh, sahiha, tajweed, such of these studying and tafsir. So uh, actually uh, they come here and uh, we can see the fruit. They, their life totally goes uh, to change for a better life. Many students and also teachers agreed that such classes have certainly changed their lives and perspectives. It has really changed my life because I'm mother of two. I'm a homemaker. I'm working at home and, uh, you know, first before coming here, we think it's difficult to uh, finish our work and also to study Quran. But Alhamdulillah, after coming here, we realized that it's really very easy and at uh, no age group, no age limit to learn the Quran. I started off with the uh, Qada and uh, slowly, slowly my teachers, they uh, 
guided me and they led me to uh, where I am now. So here I am now, teaching in Al Fatih from where I started uh, my Qaeda Nurania. Religious education is more than reading and writing. It's a whole spiritual learning process, essential for the body and soul, and of course, a healthy society. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.